The initial sensor reports of hope were starting to feed in. The first thing that cropped up was a slightly higher than expected carbon dioxide reading. The reading was still within the margin of error that remote sensors provided, though well towards the top end. It could be there were some forest fires or some increase in volcanic activity. The prospect of making a landfall during a period of high volcanic activity didn't thrill him. So many things could go wrong. Then, if it came to waiting it out in orbit till volcanic activity returned to normal, it didn't thrill him either. Still, hydrogen sulfide, hydrogen chloride and helium readings were well within the expected parameters, so further investigation of the atmosphere would have to wait until the ship was closer. Whilst that was on the back burner, the sensors were also starting to feed back information on the land masses which might start to give him an idea where to make landfall. Hope, as expected, had two large polar ice sheets, with the ice covering some 25 million square kilometres each. But thankfully, at least two large continents had so far been detected. More continents would be also likely to be found on the far side, but you have to wait for Hope to turn on its axis to reveal those. One of the revealed continents straddled the equatorial region and therefore would make the primary landfall site unless a better one revealed itself upon later inspection. You'd have to wait a couple of more days before accurate weather system prediction came through. You didn't expect that there would be winds or weather systems that would be a threat to landfall, but something else would need to be planned for, checked out, analysed and accounted for. After all, landfall, once it's been attempted, was an irreversible process. Having garnered in as much initial information from Hope as he could at this early stage, he started to run system checks on Ogier and Calypso. The initial journey out of the solar system had been without incident, but the journey in the warp bubble would have created numerous stresses on the hulls or systems, any one of which could prove catastrophic and fatal to its pilot. However, it seemed that the outer hull of the Ogier had seen sustained several microfractures, but all of these had been self-sealed and repaired. The resistance had been doing its job well, and nothing had penetrated into the interior skin and all the systems checked out was operating within the standard specifications. The Calypso was still within the hold of the Ogier, was still intact and in dormancy mode, ready to be powered up once Ogier entered orbit. Soon he'd be entering the region of the system where he might encounter asteroids. This was the most unpredictable part of the journey. From a distance, no one on Mars could tell him if there were asteroids in the system, and if they were, how many and where they're likely to be distributed. Theoretical sciences also were divided on the issue. Were they the primordial solar debris but unable to form planets, or were they a planet which has suffered a catastrophic failure? Well, at least the issue would soon be resolved. It was time to scan for any smaller objects crossing his trajectory. Due to the size of the possible objects and its current velocity, would only get a relatively short warning before a collision event. Collision event. He liked that phrase neatly summed up what would happen if the path of an asteroid and Ogier met, and no amount of resolin would put Ogier back together again.